This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital and it's time for part two of Building MRR1. Welcome back everybody. First of all, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that bell icon so you don't miss any updates like this video. So today we are doing part two of our build of our Project Railroad MRR1. Now, if you haven't watched part one, I'll link that right up here as well as in the description below. That goes over the bench work and putting the foam in place so that we are ready to do what we are doing today. And that is laying our track, putting some more foam terrain on there, painting and we're installing the DCC system. So a lot to get to in this episode. So let's go ahead and get started. I start this episode by returning the track to the layout. Then using foam project boards, I lay them out to cut the hillside. I score them in the shapes that I want using a knife and snap them apart. I repeat this process for every part of the terrain. Once this is done, I use some latex caulk to glue all of the foam in place. I then weigh it down and let it dry overnight. Here is our finished result. I do a bit of sanding to smooth out some of the edges, but much of this will be covered, so I don't do too much. Now it's time to paint this. I'm using simple household paint as my base color, and there's no need to spring for the expensive stuff. I paint the entire layout a simple brown color. You'll want to go select the brown you want from your local paint store. This will help hide any imperfections that may show up that scenery doesn't get just right. Once I'm done, I let it dry overnight to make sure that it's good to go. Now that it's dry, I can begin the fun part. I bring all of the track back in, but this time it's for good. I start to pull wires that are already attached and prepped through the holes that I had marked and drilled. Next, I bring in the rest of the track and connect it all up. Once everything is connected, I do a short DC test run to make sure there's no kinks in the physical track. Now it's time to attach some feeders. These feeders will be needed every place that a turnout can isolate the track from the main power. We will be using Kato terminal unijoiners to connect the track to power. These use wires soldered to the unijoiners to supply the power and they are very low profile. Make sure that all of your wires are on the same side to avoid short circuits. I will be placing white on the outer rail and blue on the inner rail. Now it's time to hook them up. They install like any other unit joiner. I use the little blue provided tool to remove the old unit joiners and replace them with the terminal unit joiners. And now it's time to thread the wire through the base. You will have to cut the connector off of the end of the wire for this. 
If you would like to use the connector, just make sure to leave enough extra wire on the end that you cut so that it can be easily attached, or you can purchase new connectors. These are Tamiya connectors and can be found on Amazon. I'll link them below. Once that is done, I repeat the process for all of the feeders. Now that the feeders are done, I once again break out the latex caulk to secure the track in place. For track like Kato Unitrack with pre-installed road beds, you'll want to put a small blob of caulk underneath each connection point since this is the largest point of contact between the track and the base. Once you're done, you'll weigh it down and, you guessed it, let the track dry overnight. Now that the track is dry, we can wire up the DCC bus. This will supply power to the entire layout. This method essentially hooks up the layout in parallel rather than a single point of connection. This way, one spot of electrical failure won't stop the entire layout. We will be using one of these buses from EVE model that is specifically designed for model railroading. It allows us to connect track power and use screw terminals to connect all of the wires. It even comes with the spacers and screws to attach this to your base. Once we've attached this to the layout, it's time to connect all of our feeders. We strip each wire end and attach them to the bus, making sure that all of the wires match. So all of the white ones are on one side and all of the blue ones are on another. It does not matter which side is which, just make sure that each side is the same. Once we are done, we're going to want to do some simple wire management. I will be using a cheap staple gun with U-staples and some zip ties to neaten up all these wires. And you'll have to do this pretty much custom based on how much wire you use and where you want wires to run. Now for the DCC system. I will be installing a DCC++ system on this layout. If you already have a DCC system purchased, you can go ahead and skip this section. But if you want to build a DCC system from scratch, keep watching. You can see how I build one of these in the link at the top or in the description below. We will also be using a Raspberry Pi 3 to control the system using JMRI. Now this may sound complicated, but JMRI has made this extremely easy with a Linux disk image that automatically starts JMRI and its Y throttle server so you can control it from your phone. The first thing that you will need to do is take the micro SD card that you're using as the Pi's hard drive and format it to FAT32. Next, you will need to download what is called a disk image. Basically, this is the file containing your computer's operating structure. I know that sounds intense, but it's really not. First, we go to jmri.org and click the latest production release. We then click the Raspberry Pi OS link in the left column. This will take you to a download page. You will then see a section called Pre-built Image Available, and then a link labeled here. Click that link and it will take you to a new web page where the actual download link is. Under the software image, you will need two things. The first is the latest software image, which is right here. The second is a program to flash the disk image to your drive. The website has two links, Win32 Disk Imager and Belina Etcher. Both work. 
I used Win32 because I ended up having some problems with Belina. Once you have the software downloaded, you will need to install whichever disk flasher you chose. And if you're running Win32, go ahead and extract the zipped disk image file for JMRI. Once you have done this, go ahead and make sure that your SD card that you're using with the Raspberry Pi is hooked up to the computer, and then you want to find the extracted file with your JMRI disk image. It's more than likely in the downloads folder where the original file that you downloaded is as well. You'll then select your image file from that extracted file, and then your destination, which is the SD card, and then you flash the image to the drive. To set this up the first time, you're going to want to go ahead and hook up your Raspberry Pi to a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. You only have to do this the first time. This particular software will automatically bring up JMRI once it boots. Then you just go in and set up JMRI to run DCC++. I've done this in a previous tutorial and I'll link that right up here as well as in the description below. You'll also want to have the Arduino Uno or Mega you are using for your base station connected to the Raspberry Pi during setup. Now you can install the Raspberry Pi onto the layout. And then install the Raspberry Pi using just two command strips. Once this is all done, you can connect the DCC++ base station to the layout. I use two number eight one inch screws. I then manually thread them through the holes on the Arduino Uno opposite the power connections. I then carefully drill them into the base. I then reattach the motor shield. Notice that I'm using a DC plug adapter on my motor shield. This makes plugging it in a lot easier. I will link these in the description below. Next, I connect my main track power line to the DCC bus. And you can see I'm using these little connectors. The reason that I'm doing this is if I ever want this to be a module of a larger layout, I can plug this into the DCC bus of another layout rather than using its own. I then connect the USB wire from the base station to the Raspberry Pi. I then connect all of the power up and we are ready to go. I go through the engine driver app on my Android phone to power up the base station and test. The Raspberry Pi generates its own Wi-Fi network and you connect your device to it to control the layout. Now it's time for a first test run. I go through and test all of the different points. And that's it. We now have a DCC layout capable of running a train. If you need to learn how to program a locomotive in JMRI, here's a link to a tutorial that I did on that. All you need to do is hook up a monitor, mouse, and keyboard to the Pi and run through the programming process. If you need to hook up a programming track, simply connect the track to the B motor terminals on the DCC++ base station motor shield. It's always exciting when you get to run a train on the layout for the first time, so I really hope you guys enjoyed that. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any updates. Next time, which will be in about another two weeks, we're going to be doing all of our base scenery work. We're going to be putting down the ballast and the base level scenery before we can really get into detailing. So that's what's coming up, so that'll be in about two weeks. So thank you guys so much for watching. Special thank you to all my patrons. They are listed right here. You can become a patron in the link in the description below for as little as $1 a month. So thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading. Today is going to be a whole lot of fun. We're going to be going... So just say I know the layout's like right here.
like literally right off screen. It's like right, right there. Like I can pick up buildings off of it. <laughs> oh.